Advent of the Worm. Yes, two copies of Advent of the Worm in the deck. Uh, oh, he's even got a, a yeah. light splash. Uh, he has a one copy of Far and Away uh, yeah. with a light black splash. Does he have Drown Yard in here? Um, uh, let's see. I do not see I any see other there. black card in the whole uh, 75. So it looks like he has one water grave for one far and away. Yeah, very interesting decision there. Yeah. Uh, you know, I mean, I'm all for the splashing, but splashing for one far and away. Yeah, for only what one it, card what, seems. You know, and it being far away, is it, you know, he really wanted that one card. Yeah, that badly yeah he wanted an extra card against, like, uh, I mean, it's still unsummoned. Sure. At, at, without the black mana, but I, I mean, you definitely, the appeal of the card is at casting both halves. Yeah, I mean, that's one of the cards that I, I was it most is, excited about. It is in uh, very Man. loaded up on um, card draw. He has four copies of Think Twice, four copies of Sphinx's Revelation. Mm -hmm. In uh, such a fast format, that might not be where he wants to be, but it might serve him very well uh, in this game. Yeah, not to mention the four Azorius charm as well. Uh, and he also does the uptick in Terminus, three copies, Three by copies the way, of Terminus, yeah. In addition to the four Verdicts. So, right, so a Cabin of Souls uh, follows Sun Petal Grove to Farseek. So, pretty good opening from uh, Andrew. Yeah. Sure. Shapeshifter. Shapeshifter. I wonder wow. what that could mean. Yeah. He means business. Uh, the Aetheling uh, coming into play uh, shortly. So, Jeff uh, doing his thing. Um, just playing, playing land, saying go. Um, one thing I do, I love about Jeff Hoogland's deck, uh, he has uh, two, cop two copies of a card that he really, really needs in this type of matchup, uh, Desolate Lighthouse. Uh, he has very many uh, dead cards. He needs all these uh, cards to uh, sustain himself mm -hmm. against the uh, beatdown dice. So a Think Twice is dissipated from Hoogland, and a second copy of Think Twice yeah, that's an aggressive line from uh, Jeff. Yeah, one of very, to very shut aggressive. off the entire thing twice. I don't think, I mean, if he saw Andrew's hand, I don't think he makes that play. Uh, there you see the Lighthouse. Lighthouse seeing more and more play lately, I've noticed. Yeah, I mean, definitely good when you have to play a bunch of cards like Hello the Flame is not very good uh, against Andrew's deck. Twice. But Jeff needs it in his deck to keep up with the fast deck, so he needs a way to get rid of them. For so value. Both of these playing, uh, paper, uh, both of these players playing very quickly. We see a Huntmaster come down on Jeff's side, and now Andrew is uh, gonna tap out for a three-card Sphinx's Revelation. And Andrew just just happy to draw cards and play lands, which is you know what the control deck does. But he's inching up to seven mana, and uh, I don't know if he has the Aetherling yet, but we know it's gonna resolve when it uh, when it's actually cast. Yeah, so the revelation for Andrew on his own turn served two purposes. First, yes. it, uh, Jeff could not counter it because right. he just tapped out. Second, it stopped the Huntmaster from flipping. Exactly. So Jeff had to just do his thing and pass on his turn. Right, which then flips the Huntmaster. So if he has a card like Think Twice, uh, Jeff can flip it back. So that, I mean, it's like one of the powerful things. Unfortunately, it's not at his best against a deck with Supreme Verdict. One Supreme Verdict will undo one Huntmaster. Right. But he does have to have one Supreme Verdict or one Terminus, uh, in Andrew's case, for each uh, Huntmaster and flip. Alternatively, he could play as one far and away. So no oh, spells wow. from Andrew. Not um, even a Lighthouse activation yeah, nothing, from Jeff. Nothing from either player there. And then it looks like... Uh, He's going for an under revelation? Interesting. So he does have a third revelation in his deck. Uh, yeah, I, I'm trying to figure. I, I don't even know if I saw Jeff untap his guys. Was this an end? Is, did he just say I'm swinging again and then pass and then? I believe. I believe. Turn? Yeah, I believe Jeff is in attacking. Oh, he's okay. This is in response to the attack. Then. So, okay. Snapcaster Mage will flashback to dissipate. So this basically puts Andrew in must wrath mode because. Uh, in addition to uh, the Snapcaster Mage, uh, Huntmaster of the Fells flips back. And just in time, uh, Supreme Verdict off the top for Ander. It was really somewhere closer to like a third of the way into the deck, but since he drew so many cards. Yes, <laughs> yes, yes. I mean, that's part <laughs> he, of the, he found that's exactly part of thing. the plan, he had, right. He had that many cards to find exactly. a Verdict. Yep. And it just happened to be the last one. Yep. So board now clear, Andrew with three lands untapped, Jeff now uh, 
no dudes, five lands, one uh, one of which is a loot house. Yep. Uh, Misery Mortar is a draw, one of the embarrassing cards, basically. Yeah. Um, not where you want to be against a control deck. It is, uh, it is I, an answer that you can top deck to a Sire of Insanity, to deal with Sire of Insanity, which is something. Okay. Yeah, but it has to be not, off the top of your deck. Here. Yeah, exactly. It's not going to work here. And there will be, yeah, there will be no Sire of Insanities in this match. Yeah, so an Azorius Charm to draw a card, and uh, Jeff the takes the opportunity Avenger, to flash in a Wolfier Avenger. I don't, I don't like that as much flashing in now, because now a Supreme Verdict can get it. There's no regeneration mana. Uh, well, instead, a Thrag Tusk comes down for Andrew. Andrew. Yeah, we know that Andrew does not have a an additional uh, verdict. Uh, yeah, sweeper. Yeah, verdict. Terminus but wouldn't wouldn't matter. The regeneration wouldn't matter anyway. Right, but Jeff is going to get the to untap, and although Jeff does have to be kind of uh, somewhat aggressive, he will be able to uh, maintain parity with the Avenger versus Thrag Tusk. So a far seek finds a watery grave, and Jeff. I mean, if I'm Jeff, I'm like, okay, he's gonna find a drown yard at some point, you know? Like, yeah, you I'm see that watery drown grave, yard, yeah. drown yard. That might be a, like just a nice, uh, like diversionary tactic. Sure. No, I actually want blue. Personally, if I were Andrew, I'd would want uh, a not a water grave, but an overgrown tomb. Uh, better with Farsi, like uh, Water Grave is something you would want to um, have, like you want access to Overgrown Tomb with Farsi because you don't want your, your only black card is also a blue card, so you want them to be different, you don't want a Water Grave to cast it. So Avenger gets in for three and Hoogland deals with the front half of Thrag Tusk with the Mizium Mortars that we saw him draw earlier, uh, leaving Andrew Ziggis with a Beast Token and Jeff with a Wolfier Avenger on his side of the board, so Andrew at 13 now. Augur bullets the play from Andrew. And finds a Supreme Verdict and a Thrag Tusk and a Hallowed Fountain, obviously just the Verdict going yeah. into his hand here. So for the, all of you that are out there that think that Augur bullets never hits a card, <laughs> it sometimes does. You've been proven wrong, Andrew yeah. Ziggis. Yeah, all of you should be The first Sarani's person <laughs> in the history of Magic to hit with Augur bullets. No, I, I, uh, I feel, I, I, I can't, I don't like Augur and Bolas either. <laughs> I love Augur and Bolas. Yeah, I know you like, cards. love Augur. I'm on Shaheen's side where I feel like I'm, I'm very, uh, you need to, you need to really build your deck with Augur in mind, so. Uh, Avenger gets in again, and these players really playing quickly here. Uh, Andrew's turn on taps is, uh, his Beast, <laughs> which smashed in for three, and we've got six mana, seven mana, Wait, nope, just six, just rearranging things here. Uh-oh. Aetherling. Um, yeah, that's probably going to be the ball game. It very well could be. Aetherling, of course, resolves off of that Cavern of Souls. Augur of Bolas and Beast tag teaming to knock Jeff down to 15 here. And a think twice from Jeff. Just yeah, try so, to find some uh, way to uh, pressure. In Jeff set, there are... Strangely enough, no realistic answers to Aetherling. In, so in standard, there are no realistic answers right. to Aetherling. But, well, here's the thing. Uh, Jeff's deck is not well set up to uh, to kill Andrew mm -hmm. before Aetherling happens. Um, it cannot like strip it from his hand. All it can do is hope that Andrew does not have a Cavern of Souls. Granted, he has one Cavern of Souls and one Aetherling. Saw both of them Right. that game. So, I mean, that is like a, an unlikely combination, but th that combination is literally unbeatable for Jeff's deck. It's, he's right. almost hard pressed to deal with it in any capacity whatsoever. Right, as you see, Aetherling resolves. Jeff says front, front side to think twice, back side to think twice, scoop him up. That was, yeah. that was the play. So, uh, no, uh, re you know, realizes there's no way out. That was going to take him out in two turns. He was not able to uh, pull that one out. So, down a game is Jeff Hoogland with okay. Rug Flash. Going to the sideboard, uh, Jeff wants to give Andrew a taste of his own medicine. In come two Aetherlings, in comes one Cavern of Souls. All right. See, what, see how you like this. So what else? What else is he bringing here? Um, Not much. He has one extra Dissipate. Um, he could opt to bring in, uh, he has two clones and two Progenitor Mimics. 
if he so desired, but the rest of them are remo the rest of his sideboard is removal spells. Uh, a pillar of flame, a searing spear, some electric rees, things to uh, improve his uh, beatdown matchup. But uh, I actually expect to see uh, maybe Progenitor Mimic, mm -hmm. uh, because it's just a super powerful card, it, it, albeit expensive. Uh, but if you can copy a Thraktos, it's like a must answer on the spot. Right. Uh, yeah, Progenitor Mimic is, uh, you know, new card in Dragon's Maze. Yeah. Kind of has Crazy some powerful. amount of hype, but yeah, it's uh, it's pretty powerful. It's one of those cards that uh, actually I believe Reed had it in his his sideboard for that Bant list. Uh, not present in Andrew's sideboard here. Andrew's sideboard, he's got he's got a copy of Renounce the Guilds, just a one of. That's a card that I love out of Dragon's Maze, but what yeah. it does is it makes me have to uh, forego another card I love, Detention Sphere. Well, so at least in standard, you can you still play a Blood Raven. Right, so that's what, I, that's what I've done in my decks as well. Like, mm -hmm. And he does the same thing. No Detention Spheres to be to be seen. He does uh, have a, a one single Blood copy Raven. of Blood Raven. Yeah, so one ring, one Renounce the Guilds. Uh, Renounce the Guilds is reasonable against uh, the Hunt Masters, uh, but what else does it even hit it, that he saw? First, in, hum, in hum the deck. Big. So it's reasonable and it's only a wild. Yeah. So it's not like it, you know it's the worst thing. Yeah. And, uh, uh, this has. I'm not sure if he's gonna bring in the package here. He has like a little mini package mm -hmm. of one Ranger's Path. Yeah. And the, uh, and two Angel Serenity. So that's a, like a little mini package. He has a Jace Memory Adept and a second copy of Aetherling. So we're going to be after sideboard in mm -hmm. this match. We're gonna be even. We're gonna have. Uh, Two Aetherlings yep, two and Aetherlings one Cavern each, And one Cavern, yep, exactly. They're both set up to, uh, to do that. So it's it's 57 blanks dot deck, right? Yeah, yeah basically. <laughs> well, so you have right, lands. Right. Land, you well, just want lands and Aetherlings. Yeah. As so, long as one of your lands is a Cavern. I do like how, I do like Andrew's setup. He is very, like, and I think Andrew is very soft against the beatdown decks. Mm -hmm. uh, he does, he's not, a, he's got basically only Azorius Charm and Miracle Terminus and Augur Bolas. For early defense, not not where you want to be against you know burning tree emissary right. all over the place. Uh, he decks. can he can get an but early thrag tusk with a far seek, you know like a mm -hmm. turn four thrag tusk if he doesn't have the verdict or something just to buy some more time. Yeah. Um, but yeah, you're right. It's it's the real early stuff is is Zorius charm auger, and maybe that's why he does play four augers. It makes a lot of sense in his deck. That's the um, card he decided he wanted for his anti beat down stuff. So. Yeah, and, and, and that's another good good card. You know, advent of the worm, very another, good with yeah. auger bolus. Mm -hmm. So you know the as far as augers, the only things that it can hit. Is, yeah, his deck is well built, but heavily skewed towards yeah, not having good. dead cards against the slow, slower decks. Yeah, I, I I like it. I'm still. Uh, somewhat surprised at the inclusion of black for far away. Yeah. But uh, but other than that, I mean, I guess if you can do it and you really want it, that's fine. I, I would be uh, interested to hear. Yeah, interesting enough on his deck sheet, uh, his deck name is Should Have Played Hexer. <laughs> I like it. It's actually the word "bant" is written there and crossed, crossed out, off. and then it says "should have played textbook." Like yeah. What, what are we at? Magic carpets yeah, over here. Jeff Hoover and the Cult of Tech. The magic carpet. Yeah, why not? I mean, it's, it's got a, it's got a rug in the name. It works out. So uh, apparently, uh, like Jeff Hoover wants to show you the world. Yes. There's a there's a theme song somewhere there. Uh, Hoogland, I believe, maybe mulliganing. It looks like Andrew's got a hand there. Yeah. That he, he's kept, so Hoogland may be down to six or further. Uh, I don't think it's been too long, so possibly. I, I would As, yeah, I think, think it's just uh, one, one mulligan so far. Yeah. But there you saw the power of Aetherling. Andrew right. Ziggis literally I think cast it. In the I think it'll be a much bigger uh, bigger thing post sideboard mm -hmm. as there are more copies of Cavern of Souls, more copies of Aether that yeah. both players deck. And we're off. Hinterland Harbor, turn one for Jeff Hoogland. Hallowed Fountain for it's Andrew. Not a ideal land. Hopefully, uh, nope. Mm, you've got the Buddy Land draw. Yep. And with no buddies. And Hinterland Harbor for Andrew. And, and Andrew's doing things uh, as, as you draw him up. Yeah. Think twice. Does that resolve? It does. Draws a far seek. That's and pretty he's powerful. Have a turn so he's bringing three in the, he brought in the angel serenities and has drawn one. Plays a uh, breeding pool. Doing some things a little out of sequence here, but uh, you know, 
passes the turn. Yeah. These guys again playing oh, yeah. very quickly. 14 minutes into the match, and, and these two. Right. Uh, a lot of times you uh, far seek announce what you're gonna go get. Right, and then just play and then land pass, pass the turn. Yeah. So think twice at the end of turn for Jeff. Uh oh. And, uh, uh oh. Can't find his. Jeff Hoogland does not have his fourth land. Yeah, because uh. So he's he's quite under the gun. Yeah, oh, the Oblivion Ring. He did bring in the Oblivion Ring. Okay. That's interesting. A and Rangers the Rangers pass. pass. So you mentioned that package. Brought in the, the package. And See, here. this is actually a point where I'd really love Overgrown Tomb in Andrew's deck. There's uh, the Rangers path from Andrew. He, he does not have an Overgrown Tomb to get his uh, Black Mana turn on his one card. Uh, one black card. But he is still at an overwhelming mana advantage. Especially uh, when Jeff, Jeff is missing Jeff, his land Yeah, drops. Jeff yeah. doesn't even have uh, lands to play one spell. Uh, for the most part. Yeah, as you mentioned... Uh, I think he's going to discard. As you mentioned... Oh, he just burns him, I think. Was that a burn or was that a discard? It's a discard. Yeah, I saw the point and I thought that might have been a burn, yeah. Yeah. But no, just, uh, just a discard. So, yeah, the... Uh, you mentioned how big Huntmaster is in this in this deck. And Only if you can cast can't it. Can't even cast it, yeah. yeah. And looking at Andrews, he's got twice as many lands as Jeff. Yeah, now, here comes Angel of Angel Serenity. Serenity. That's, a, that's a really, really, really aggressive play. I do not like this. I think he's got a uh, second I, angel, though. Just, oh, this I mean, can't get dissipated. Okay, I like this a little more. Uh, Jeff does not have double blue for his dissipate. Right. So he would have to syncopate it there. But, um, yeah, this thing's not looking good for uh, good for Jeff. Yeah, literally just playing it as a Mahamodi Jin. Yeah, absolutely. Five, six flyer, that's it. And there we have the fourth land and the hunt master that fells for Jeff. And... Well, it's something. He's got yeah, I believe, uh, an uphill battle. Angel but. 2 or yeah. Sphinx's Revelation, take your pick. First, he's going to get in for I 5. Like, I like Revelation for 5, myself. Yeah, here we have uh, Jeff tapped out yet again for Huntmaster and Andrew with the opportunity to resolve whatever he wants. Yeah, he looks like he's lining up the Revelation mana here. Uh, yeah, yeah, I mean, Andrew's hand is absolutely loaded. He's got... Revelation, yeah. Angel, Think Twice. I think he's got double Revelation. So has a blood in ring. If, oh, he, right. uh, if he so desires. I don't know if he's going to go with Angel Serenity. Yep. Angel, take out your wolf. Just the wolf. Yeah, keeps the Huntmaster from flipping and permanently deals with the wolf. Um, not too afraid of the flipped Huntmaster here. So, I mean, one thing that uh, Jeff can do is he can uh, say go uh, with the Huntmaster, uh, pass it. the turn, flip it, deal two damage, and uh, turn one of the angels. That'll deal one of them. He right. still has the other one to deal with. Uh, so things not still not looking remotely remotely good for him. And you can see it on uh, Jeff's face there. He's uh, looking for a way out and not finding one. Yeah, it is. You're not in in good shape when your opponent's casting Ranger's Path while you're waiting for your fourth land. Right. It's just, you start to like sink into your seat. So, so there you saw that play exactly as you uh, mentioned. Huntmaster flips, does two to the Angel, and then Jeff turns it into an 0-1 with two damage on it, dealing with that permanently. And uh, right, so, yeah. um, this could be even a bigger nail in the coffin. I would have liked to see an Oblivion Ring there from Andrew. But it should be that uh, advent of the worm. Yeah, off the from, top, I believe. Yeah, from Andrew. So Hunt or just the ambush. In. Yeah, it could be. Huntmaster just looks a, like gets in for four against Andrew, but uh, Jeff, just a, yeah, the big rubbins if he tried to ambush there. Right. He, instead, he's going to just play it as a as a win condition here. A five five and a five six represents lethal for Jeff Hoogland if he has no other answer. Um, so I believe this needs to be met with a dissipate. And he does and have something. If I'm something. Jeff as well, I also cast a think twice if I have one. Andrew's nope, going to uh, Andrew's going to think for him, so this Huntmaster <laughs> should flip back. So it puts Jeff up to 12. 12. That's, uh, that represents a one more turn at the moment. Right. So awkwardly enough that now that Jeff found his lens, like he needs his he needs a second turn and burn back. Yeah. A snapcaster could uh, could help too. 
even if it's just one half, even if he just gets the turn side after uh, right. damaging the Right, that's angle, actually, like yeah, quite excellent. And pretty much the only thing that um, could really punish Andrew for his double, pretty much naked angel. Yeah. Uh, no, does not you take advantage of the trigger. He's really interested in Mahamudi's Jin, as you said. Yeah. But the angel knocks Jeff to seven, and Andrew's follow-up here is a Sphinx's revelation for what looks like three cards, yeah, leaving uh, up two. Yeah, no negates in uh, Jeff's deck, so that's that's resolving or dispels. Uh, see renounce a renounce the, guild. the guilds, and uh, wow, John. Andrew seemed to set that up pretty much as he wanted. I, I wonder if, ex if that's exactly what he was hoping to draw into. Not that he really I, needs an answer to Hunt Master. I think but, like he uh, he had Augur Bolas available. Oh, I see. And wanted to... Yeah, you're right, he did draw an Augur. Yeah. And now he's got the Renounce. He decides to uh, go away from the Augur plan at that point. Hunt Master, of course, doesn't flip. Swinging in, Andrew's gonna, gonna take four. It's possible that Andrew has his uh, version of this. So he's going to just think twice here. Just wow. wants, wants, he wanted that one card so badly, that, uh, but he didn't didn't decide to uh, rev for it. I think it was the Augur plan, but it seems like an interesting, uh, interesting Yeah, this is just an embarrassment of riches for Andrew here. Yeah, he's his got like two more revelations. So Angel's coming, down, or coming in, and we've got Snapcaster turn and block. That resolves, I believe. Unless yes. Andrew has uh, is an Azorius turn, but no, he just lets no, it die. So, yeah, so there you saw that uh, the sequence, as I mentioned, about despite the fact that Fuse cannot be uh, it, cards, split cards cannot be fused from, from the, the graveyard, graveyard. Yeah. you can still get both halves out of it with Snapcaster Mage because Snapcaster act, uh, Snapcaster's power acts as the, the burn side of turn and burn in that particular situation. So Thrag Tusk has a follow-up from Andrew and an Augur Bolas finds a far seek. Andrew still So Andrew takes a really aggressive I'm really confused by Andrew's line here. He plays these angels out really aggressively and then just does not protect them at all. Yeah, I mean did he have the option to protect them though? Like he didn't have a Zoya's right. charm. I mean he didn't you can have... protect them with each other. Okay. So you wait till one dies, and then you get it put it under right, the other right, right. one, he and went, then you he start went. a loop. Right, okay, that makes sense. There we have announced the guilds from Andrew is going to likely deal with Huntmaster. Jeff trying to decide if there's anything he can do about it. Uh, I don't believe there is. Huntmaster dies. Huntmaster yeah. the only... I believe the only target for a renounce the guilds. We have a Searing Spear there from Jeff who's going to deal with the front half of Thrag Tusk leaving behind a beast. Be so can. So uh, Jeff's going to need another spear to deal with that one. You need two spears. Yeah. For Thrag Tusk. Um, we see Andrew has a backup Thrag Tusk in hand. Right. Andrew's going to go ahead and attempt to get Here in. Here comes Yeva. Uh, green Storation Angel. Yeah. So Augur going to get blocked by the wolf. Yeva's going to get in front of the beast. Beast goes away. And Andrew's going to go ahead and cast his follow up Thrag Tusk. Gain five. Five life not important to Andrew uh, as much as the five power it represents. Yeah, while Jeff is well, the five out. power that represents. Yeah, <laughs> you have to. Uh, while Jeff is which, admin of the worm. Either of which is lethal. Yeah. So, five hive trampler for Andrew. Jeff untaps his Yeva Snapcaster, Wolf, all his lands, trying to find a way to, uh, to, to, to keep himself alive and somehow come back. Yeah, uh, not going to be easy. Now, uh, remember how far behind he was, though, earlier in this game. He has kind of dug back in, but it's an uphill battle Yeah, still. I still think Andrew still has so, his hand is so good. I, I don't see... Uh, I don't see Andrew not closing this game out. So Jeff passes back. Andrew casts an Oblivion Ring on his turn, dealing with Yeva. I believe Jeff has another copy of Yeva. He does have four copies because he says it's so good that uh, people try and kill it. 
So yep. I want another copy. And that's exactly and what here you comes see another here. copy. Andrew declares all his guys as attackers. Yeva comes down. Snapcaster gets in front of Thrag Tusk. Uh, Yeva and the Wolf come down to deal with the Worm Token. Yeah, and that's a block that'll leave uh, Jeff with a wolf. A, yeah. not dead, and B, with a wolf. Exactly. So Jeff takes zero damage there. I did. Oh, he did take one. I'm yeah, sorry. Yeah, he takes one from the Augur oh, bullet. That's right. Oh. Forgot the Augur was also getting in there. And he's so happy to cast a Species Revelation for three. Yeah. Close combat, he knocks it off the table. <laughs> and a Cavern of Souls, likely naming Shapeshifter. I would imagine. Um, don't see the Aetherling just yeah. yet. Yeah. Jeff And that's basically what Jeff Jeff needs in this situation. Yeah. He is he is back to uh, running out of cards. This Andrew is just so far ahead. <laughs> Yeva number three from Jeff. Going to uh, get in front of the Thrag Tusk. Wolf going to get in front of the Augur Bolus. Jeff, staying alive. Yeah, Jeff kind of doing the, yeah, this is all I got, man. And he's uh, like, really? A third Yeva? All right. I guess that's something. Azorius Charm on the Wolf. Azorius Charm on the Wolf. I really Jeff hope uh, Jeff has the fourth Yeva. Yeah, just, just, just to have it, you know? Why not? And uh, second auger for Andrew. Jeff left with zero defenders at the moment. I, I will make no comment as to the quality of that auger of Bolas. Did it, did it whiff? It, I was, uh, it whiffed. So, I, the funny thing is, I don't think Andrew cares. He wanted the extra power. Yeah, I think one, at three this point. Was, yeah. Like now one blocker uh, you know, t is going to put Jeff to two. Can do. I don't know what those cards. I think he's just gonna jam this Aetherling. Oh, Aetherling, Andrew, with plenty of mana, but does he have a counter spell? No, he doesn't have very many, and uh, there is zero in the main deck, and only two negates in the sideboard. Yeah, so, so. he's never countering an Aetherling. Uh, on the flip side, I believe uh, Andrew has still no. The cast is Oblivion Ring. Oh, jeez. Oh, Jace. You wanna? If you're gonna wrath me, I will, uh, I will happily <laughs> switch modes. Yeah, so Revelation at the end of Jeff's turn draws Andrew still more cards. Right, Andrew uh, now attacks with Augur, Augur, Beast. Aetherling gets in front of Beast, and uh, Jeff yeah, down to two. Yeah, the two Augurs will shock Jeff down to uh, shock range. Yeah. I does need think... another uh, creature to, uh, to get through the Aetherling. But once he finds that, I uh, can lock up this game. I believe he has two Farseeks, uh, Jace Memory Adept, yeah. and an Azorius Charm. He's gonna, looks like he's gonna he's flash gonna back flash a back. Uh, Andrew Zig is a uh, man that loves his value. Yeah, he does. Uh, draws on the gate there. So he's gonna cast the front side of the, uh, or either a Farseek or the front side of the team twice, yeah. And he finds a Sun Petal Grove. This is this, this is a crazy game of Jeff to come back. Yeah, from two life down, uh, missing land drops. Yeah, he's just missing land drops like the majority of the game. Andrew just has all the access to everything in the world. Yeah, everything but an Aetherling of his own uh, so far. But yeah. another thing twice from Andrew, didn't see what he drew. Now yeah. he's going to far seek. Aetherling versus the entire contents of Andrew's deck. You feel like he save his own right. Aetherling. You feel like maybe if he's digging for for something specific, the Farseek first would have been a better idea, just so I he doesn't draw yes. the land. Uh, I would Farseek uh, as well and just like kind of reload. Right. Again, like he's been doing. His revelations have been pretty small. <laughs> he's cast, I believe, three revelations already, so. Uh, Hooglin's turned. Looks like he's going to get in with the Aetherling for five, I, I think is what that was. Um, I think yeah, he pumped it. Pumped it and once then, and then uh, used its yeah. blink ability to basically give it Vigilance. Right. Aetherling, very so, reminiscent of an older card. Morphling, uh, for those of you guys who mm -hmm. weren't playing back during There's the been quite late a few 90s. Links. Yes, the Morphling was the original. It was uh, huge when it was in Standard and... Um, 
you know, the Wizards has kind of followed with the with that theme with several other lings, as you mentioned, through the years. But Aetherling, the first one that's really anywhere near as good as the first. Alright, so it looks like uh, a little maybe a little confusion over whether Andrew's played a land. I believe he had. Um, yeah, it may have been that he's played a land. Uh, yes. So, All right, so here comes uh, Jace Memory Adapt. Not one of the cards that was a huge breaker in Sphinx's Revelation mirror matches. Mm -hmm. uh, not a big deal in Aetherling mirror matches. So he uh, mills Jeff uh, and draws a card. Yeva number There's four. Yeva four. So both augers getting in, both augers yeah, getting I'll blocked and dying. So runs right into a wall. Supreme verdict uh, coming from Andrew. Uh, we'll kill the Yeva. Right. But and guess what it doesn't kill? Good, Our good friend Aetherling. Yeah, Aetherling exiles. So Yeva's dealt with. All the Yeva's dealt with. And, and this, uh, is, this is absolutely crazy. Yeah, Jeff is in a situation where he could possibly come back at yeah. two life. I, I did not think this was remotely possible. And, uh... There you go, Aetherling in I for mean, another five. I mean, Andrew's just... Oh, there you go. Oh, found his own Aetherling. Yeah. So, yeah, now it's, now it's likely over. And, yeah, that's... Aetherling, go. Yeah, I mean, like... And we've got dueling Aetherlings, but uh, not dueling There's a turn totals. and burn to, uh... To fog it for one turn, but I believe Jeff does not have close to enough uh, time yeah. to like he would have to draw. I like, think Andrew is at 20 right now. So I think that Aetherling no, attacked for five last turn. Last was, turn it killed the Jace. Oh, oh, that's right. You're right. I'm sorry. Uh, I believe the life total is correct. It, it may might make it say like uh, maybe Jeff under pumped one turn because you can you can deal eight with an Aetherling. Mm -hmm. Um, and I know Jeff chose to do uh, five, five one turn instead of six. Yeah. Right, yeah, if he had done six, it would have been three a three turn clock. Remember, right, so he might six. only need like one extra card. So yeah. here comes uh, Andrew's eighth one. Yeah, this is going to get negated. And there it and is. And that's yeah. a handshake. So Andrew finally does after millions and millions of turns. And yeah. almost like a. It actually got to the point where, like, I kind of like Jeff to win that game. Right, well, and was, I never thought that would happen. Right, right. Yeah, because yeah. it was Aetherling. He found, he an found Aetherling, Aetherling right. had it in play. Andrew did not have it. He was furiously flashing back Think Twices. Right. Spent all of his revelations and still hadn't found an Aetherling. Like, yeah, how that was good is that card? Ridiculous. Yeah, so. Well, he saw an Aetherling.